many times you won't feel like praying. If anybody tells you prayer is really nice and exciting, he is lying. <laughs> prayer is hard work. Yes, you will get to that place in prayer because there is always a battle between the flesh and the spirit. But now if you can overpower and crucify the flesh, when you don't feel like praying, you go and hit the floor and begin to pray. After a while, you'll begin to enjoy that. So as I said, I may not stop talking about Thanksgiving. <laughs> Sorry if you're getting bored, but yeah, I don't care. <laughs> Hey, listen, the reason I say that is not with an air of arrogance, but I, want, I really mean what I say because I want you to be successful in life. I want you to understand how to handle the keys. I remember something. Don't neglect the word and don't neglect prayer. These are the foundations on which the Christian life has to be built. Not, listen, going to church is like going to school. Going to church is for fellowship. To be strengthened with one another's faith. But just because you go to church does not guarantee success in life. Only what you learn in church when it becomes a part of you. Listen, I mean, even as you read the Bible or, read the, uh, or listening to the Word, it's not because of the exercise of listening or reading that's going to cause you to win in life or live in victory. What needs to happen is has to become a part of you. Say, I can eat. But if my digestive system is not functioning as it should, am I going to grow healthy? No. Because there's something wrong in, the, in processing the food that I eat. So it's an internal issue. That's why the Lord says, repent. Because something has to be fixed inside you. Is that true? So you can be reading the Bible, and you can say, Pastor, how many times did you read the Bible? Does it really matter? Does it really matter? Because what people want to know is not how many times you read the Bible. What is the Bible doing to you? What proof do you have that the Bible is working in you? Because it's only head knowledge. And I'm not saying you should not read the Bible several times. You should read more and more and more. Please, please don't get me wrong and don't misunderstand what I'm saying. I'm just saying if the Bible does not produce results in your life, then the whole issue of reading the Bible is a is to be questioned. Why are you reading it? Are you reading because you like exciting stories where one man killed 800 people? Like no movie will show you today. <laughs> it's better than Netflix, I'm telling you. One guy, one guy killing so many. A giant who was three times his size was slain with one stone. Better than any movie. Do you read it only for that or to see what was behind that stone? What caused that stone? Why did the stone and how did the stone find that one place that was exposed on his face? There is something. See, when they say, for example, you see, when the difference between the guy who is full of the word and not is this. When they say, there are ten people, only two are being selected. The first thought that goes through my mind is, maybe I'm not the one. No. If you're full of the word, you say, I'm sorry, I've got to pray for the rest of the eight. They're not getting selected. Because I'm the one that is selected. God cannot bypass me. That's confidence, not arrogance. I'm special. I am God's apple of his eye. Come on, come on. You got to know you are special in his eyes. How do I know? That's what I read in the Bible. That's what he said about others. And so the Bible says, what he has done for others, he will do for me. The testimony of Jesus is a prophecy. So if I read about how God blessed somebody, why don't I put myself in that place? Yes. Hallelujah. I'm blessed. I'm victorious. I'm destined to win. Yeah, okay. But then you fell. So, a righteous man may fall, but he will rise up again with the knowing that God is with me. 
When it says the righteous man may fall, don't just think about falling into sin. Oh, I committed adultery. The first thought that goes through Indian Christian mind when we talk about sin is adultery. <laughs> is that true? Yeah, that's how it is over here. No, you fall when you do not achieve or don't do what God tells you to do. When you miss the mark. When you know God told you to give 10,000 here and you never gave. You gave only 1,000. You know that you fell. God told you, give that man 20,000 and you ignored that. You fell. God said, I want you to be involved in this work of the church. And you said, I'm too busy. You fell. A righteous man may fall seven times, but he'll rise up. I am a son of God. I am a son of God. Hallelujah. Church, please listen. You're destined to win and make a mark in this life. I don't know which planet we'll be on in, after we go to the Lord. I don't know what His plans are. But right now, this is our planet. The earth was made for man. That's it. God doesn't reveal too much after that. He says, we'll rule and reign on this earth. The earth belongs to the Lord and God gave it to us. Say amen. amen. So when it, you know, I want to encourage you. Listen, I, I, I want you to know that you cannot, please listen to me carefully. You cannot be negligent in your prayer life. You cannot. Simply cannot. You have to have systems that guide your life. So, let me ask you a question. When you wake up in the morning, you have a cup of coffee. How many do that? Wait, wave at me. Wave at me. Cup of coffee. Wave, wave, wave. Now, did it happen the day you were born? It became a system. So now it's automatic. Likewise, when you wake up, the, f the practice that you must get into is, I need to pray. And it has to be systematic approach to life. Oh, today I'm excited. I really felt God. I take my Bible, read 20 chapters. For the next 20 days, I don't touch the Bible again. <laughs> you cannot grow. Systems are important to bring discipline and enlightenment. So, when I say my clock rings the alarm at this particular time that I need to pray, I need to set that time. 7 o'clock, 8 o'clock, 9 o'clock, whatever that is. When it rings, that means I have to hit that floor on my knees in that room and pray. Do I feel like? I don't care. Many times you won't feel like praying. You will, if anybody tells you prayer is really nice and exciting, he is lying. <laughs> prayer is hard work. Yes, you will get to that place in prayer because there is always a battle between the flesh and the spirit. But now, if you can overpower and crucify the flesh, when you don't feel like praying, you go and hit the floor and begin to pray. After a while, you'll begin to enjoy that. But if anybody says, oh, I enjoy praying, he's a liar. <laughs> prayer is not for enjoyment. Prayer is a battle. It's not pleasure. It's not entertainment. Do you realize that? Amen. Did you get anything to...
you blessed? I pray that God will encourage you to become men and women of prayer this morning. Hallelujah. Come on. I cannot overemphasize the need to pray much in the Holy Ghost. So minimum is how much? How long? But that's not enough. And let me renew my statement. Nights are not just for sleeping. Oh, pastor, I don't have time. Yeah, sacrifice your sleep. I understand you're a very busy man. No matter how busy you are, you find time to eat and you find time to sleep. And God says, sacrifice. When I sacrifice my eating, when I sacrifice my sleep, it's sacrificing because I love God. And God honors that. Amen. Hallelujah.